this is your Friday Info Hub. We wrap up this week with the following major updates. A parliamentary team visited the Chedi Jagan Airport today and it was announced that travelers will begin enjoying the new facilities in a few weeks. The landmark Juvenile Justice Bill, which was unanimously passed in Parliament last night, will modernize how young offenders are treated by the law. And a former beauty queen teams up with one of this country's oldest bookstores to get more young people to read. The details after this quick break. Paying the right amount of tax helps provide a good credit rating. A good credit rating is a requirement for getting financing. You could use your good credit rating to get loans to expand your business, buy a house or car, or pay for your university tuition. Take advantage of the tax amnesty and pay no interest or penalties from now to June 30. Invest in yourself. Pay your taxes. A message from the Ministry of Finance and the Guyana Revenue Authority. In our lead story this evening, we begin by telling you that travelers will enjoy spanking new facilities at the Chedi Jargon Airport. Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson explained that the upgraded facilities will be handed over within weeks by contractor China Harbor and Engineering Company. The departure lounge we saw downstairs will be opened up for use next week. Progressively, we put one airline there from next week and they'll give them a week trial run of it. And if everything is perfect, we move all the others there. So by the middle, it's anticipated by mid May, the new departure lounge will be open. This section which we begin it will be tour shortly after you have your brunch is scheduled to open in June. Patterson added that bids for automated kiosks to scan passports and speed up the immigration process are being sought. His Excellency had asked us to ensure that the airport is uniquely Guyanese with, with, uh, with, with, with our um, craft and pictorial images and we have incorporated that. He's also mandated us to ensure um, after having a tour that one, that the time spent in the airport for arriving customers should be cut at least in half. Members of Parliament, the private sector and other stakeholders were given a guided tour of ongoing expansion works at the CGIA. This comes as efforts continue to improve facilities at the country's main international airport. Paul McCallum for InfoHub. The historic juvenile justice bill was unanimously passed by the National Assembly last evening. Here is Stacey Carmichael with that report. The Juvenile Justice Bill will pave the way for Guyana to fulfill various international treaty obligations. More importantly, it also ushers in a new milestone in the nation's journey towards juvenile justice reform. The bill, Minister of Public Security Kemraj Ramjitan explained, covered the legal actions that could be taken once juveniles commit an offence and gives those committed or incarcerated a second chance to redeem themselves. This spent 14 years under a PPP administration, three years under a new AFC administration. And why shouldn't we get on with the business? Yes, yes. And so it is important that that be appreciated and we understand then that these provisions in this are very, very exhaustive. They cater for a lot of the, uh, the niceties that are asked of in the international obligations. Attorney General Basil Williams alluded to the bill's measures that speak to the mode of dealing with those juveniles found guilty of offenses. For the diversion allows for effective and timely interventions focused on correcting offending behavior. And the bill says so that diversion measures shall be designed to provide, to provide an effective and timely response to offending behavior outside the bounds of judicial measures. They must also be designed to encourage juveniles to acknowledge and repair the harm caused to the victim and the community. In her support of the legislation, Minister of Social Protection Amna Ali noted that the measures will ensure access to facilities for the custody, education and rehabilitation for juvenile offenders, protect them from harm and increase their chances of a better life. It is imperative that we support effective alternatives to detention when possible because children should not be incarcerated. The vast majority of children who are incarcerated have been accused of minor or non-violent crimes. And they should not be stigmatized and ostracized for having committed relatively minor acts. The Ministry of Social Protection, Minister Ali, also assured will play an integral role in positively changing the lives of children 
through guidance and counseling and the other alternatives to incarceration as listed in the bill. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. Stacey returns now with the Cabinet Roundup for this week. Guyana's immediate response to the Langkawi Declaration with the pledging of 371,000 hectares of our rainforest for the establishment of the Arakama International Center for Rainforest Conservation and Development was highlighted by President David Granger at the 2018 Chogam, Minister of State Joseph Harmon at today's post-cabinet press conference. Arakama, he reminded the meeting, remained the Commonwealth's flagship environmental program also highlighted by His Excellency was Guyana's accreditation of the Connection Protected Areas consisting of over 7,000 square kilometers to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy Program. Minister Harmon reminded that President Granger also attended the London Malaria Summit where he committed to the elimination of the disease within this nation's borders. Highlighting the ExxonMobil drill ship Noble Bob Douglas' arrival, Minister Harmon said it signals the increase in preparatory activities by the company for forced oil. Guyana will benefit from a $20 million U.S. dollar grant for capacity building in the oil and gas sector. As a consequence, the World Bank would provide two experts to conduct a high-level workshop on the Sovereign Wealth Fund, including its fiscal arrangements, rules, and best practices. The workshop will be held on May 21, 2018, and will see the participation of all government ministers and MPs, including the opposition. The government's commitment to the implementing measures to minimize the use of plastics was also noted by Minister Harmon. Propose appropriate legislation to give effect to those measures. In closing, it was stated by the minister that work on the Indian Immigration Monument at Palmyra will soon commence. This comes on the heels of an inspection by a ministerial team. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. ExxonMobil is still optimistic about their prospects for finding more oil in Ghana's waters, even though the most recent well did not turn up commercial quantities. Here is Tiffany Rodias. Dry wells? that is, wells with no hydrocarbons, are not uncommon in the oil and gas industry. In fact, the industry standard success rate is 1 in 5 when drilling for oil and gas in deep water offshore operations. For a frontier country, Guyana has beaten the industry's odds. This is according to Exxon's Government and Public Affairs Senior Director, Kimberly Brasington. While we've had really great success to date, uh, we've beaten the industry standard and the industry rate of success um, in the past two years. ExxonMobil recently encountered its second dry well since it began exploration with the completion of the drilling of Sorabum. The Sorabum well completed drilling and we reached our total depth and ExxonMobil announced today that we have not found hydrocarbon in the sorbum well. And so what that means, we call it a, a dry hole. Brasington noted that the well was the first playtype of its kind in the Stabrook block, where seven successful discoveries have been made previously. Sorabim was drilled by the noble Bob Douglas, which recently arrived in Guyana to drill the 17 wells for the Liza development. The Bob Douglas will finish this well. Uh, in the next few days, and then it will move on to start development drilling. Minister of State Joseph Harmon today noted that the arrival of the Bob Douglas signals the escalation of developments in the industry for first oil in 2020. Reporting for InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. Girls were encouraged to explore careers in ICT at a mini expo at Giftland Mall. Tiffany joins us again with that report. First Lady Mrs. Sandra Granger today at the launching of the Girls in ICT Day 2018. Caribbean Tech Lab, Guyana, reminded that Information Communication Technology, ICT, is one of the world's fastest growing sector. She underscored the vital importance of developing and building on ICT skills, given that two-thirds of the jobs in the near future will require this. One study estimates that in the next, and I quote, in the next 10 years, 80% of the jobs will be, require a blend of STEM, of STEM globally. Nearly one new STEM job will replace four jobs lost for men and replace 20 jobs lost for women, putting women 
seriously at the risk of losing out. Minister of Public Telecommunications Catherine Hughes in her address pointed to the multifaceted use of technology in a number of fields. And with the emergence of the oil and gas industry, Minister Hughes highlighted the need for an ICT proficient population. The entire developed world has gone digital and Guyana has the opportunity to take the best of all the initiatives and make sure that we create a population that is ICT proficient. And this is a foundation of the development of our country. Meantime, Business Minister Dominic Gaskin expressed the need for more local businesses to utilize ICT in their transactions. He believes that Guyana can become a hub for innovation and technology in this part of the world. None of this is impossible. However, none of this is likely to happen unless we create the, the space for this industry to grow and to become relevant to our country's development. Students at today's Tech Lab will benefit from teaching on topics such as design thinking with Google and introduction to website development. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. The police efforts to boost ICT and sports got a shot in the arm with a donation from the Zara Group. We now bring you that report. Minister of Public Security Kamrat Ramjitan this morning described the donation as beneficial. He recalled during the recent debate on the Juvenile Justice Bill, it was agreed that education and sports could play a critical role in curbing negative attitudes. Getting non-law enforcement policies and programs into the effort is going to help. Namely, like education through IT and sports and involvement in cricket and football and basketball. Because the minute you indulge the kids into those efforts, their idleness is diverted to positive effects. The sports gear and computers, which amounted to over $3.8 million in value, was donated by Jay Subraj, Nadio Singh, and Shavran Kumar. We were hoping they would go to the community, and I was fortunate to meet the minister and Wednesday morning at the airport, and we were just chatting. And you say you'd like to be here when you hand them over. And I said, we are hoping that these little gestures, if some of it can go to the community, and make the police take it to the community, you can be building a relationship with that community. And it's all about, you say, um, building bridges. Building partnerships with community residents and support organizations is just one of the major tasks the Ghana Police Force has focused on. Paul McAdam for InfoHub. And we wrap up with a heartwarming story of a former beauty queen and one of the country's oldest bookstores teaming up to get students of Communius Primary to read more. Owner of Miladies, Colleen Reyes, said the idea came after the students created Easter decor for the salon last month. When we got the eggs to the salon, they Clients were so happy with those eggs and so blown away by the artistic capabilities of these young kids. And so we were saying, um, we were asking them to pick their favorite eggs. But what we didn't know is that the clients also wanted to give the kids something. They wanted to, do to donate something, um, money towards that particular child. So, it, like I said, it kind of snowballed from there. Reyes discussed potential areas of assistance with the head teacher, Michelle Booker, and the reading corner was settled on. I think it was a fabulous idea to promote literacy because kids, you know, you, you send them to the library. The library has textbooks, right? Textbooks and some. So, a reading corner is really nice because it provides an atmosphere where the kids can be relaxed and they can get into the art of storytelling. The books were donated by Leela Austin of Austin's Bookstore, a move welcomed by her teacher Booker. We're happy that Miladies has come on board to present these books and tokens to you. The collaboration between the school and the salon began in 2016. Miladies has supported the school through various contributions over their partnership. Reporting for InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. Connect with us 24-7 on our website, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and WhatsApp for more details as we bring you updates on what is happening all across Guyana. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. The Ministry of Finance has announced a tax amnesty, effective January 1 to September 30, 2018. This means that you can pay all your outstanding income, property, corporate, capital gains, and withholding taxes. 
file your taxes before June 30, 2018, and all interest and penalties will be waived. Or file before September 30, 2018, and pay only 50% of the interest and penalties accrued. Invest in your country. Pay your taxes. A message from the Ministry of Finance and the Guyana Revenue Authority.